Hi, everyone, and welcome to News in Depth. I'm Tom Slavik. I'm with Jeff Gardner. How are you doing, Jeff? Hi, Tom. Great. Great to be here. Good. Now, are you the, uh, is, is it the city manager? Slash finance director. Slash finance director. I'm a twofer deal there in Plymouth. Plymouth. Right. Okay. Now, did your twofer. That means I do two jobs and get paid for three quarters of one. Isn't it amazing when the economy uh, gets to be, uh, you know, uh, rough? How much we can take on and how much we can get done. Right. I'm the, for quite frankly, the best management deal in this county. I'd like to say. Okay. Well, I'm not. I don't know if I should ask you how much you're making <laughs> or not. I mean, you know. No. Um, uh, not nearly as much as Gene okay. at the water. Agency. But at least they're not asking to be the police chief out there. Right. Also, right. I agree. And we're very happy with the sheriff. Okay, Jeff. So. You know, maybe a lot of the what we'll be talking about is the economy. I don't think you can, um, uh, you know, be alive today and not be uh, wondering a little bit about the economy. Right. And uh, we have a little bit of bad news, I think, for the uh, community with AB 1191 not getting out of committee, not passing through committee. Right. And uh, like you were just saying right before we went on the air, that meant how much was it for city of Plymouth? Uh, $27,000 $27,000, right. Yeah, and the county took a hit of a million dollars almost. So, right. So proportionally, we're much less, but for our budget, you know, it's about 5% of our general fund budget. So that's, right. that's a hit for us. I had planned on getting that money. We are going to get some reimbursement for one year, but moving forward, there's no reimbursement in the that's been codified in legislation. And so it's going to be an issue. We're just going to deal with the loss of that money. Okay, and 5% might not sound like a lot. It probably isn't, you know, like a whole lot in a sense to a family. I'm sure they could say, well, we'll cut down. You know, we can find a place to cut. Not all families. Don't, don't, get, me, don't get me wrong. Everybody's uh, different in that. But uh, if we had the federal government with a 5% cut, they'd be screaming. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's rough for us. I mean, this year we're, uh, from a cash flow standpoint, I'm budgeting a citywide uh, the five percent in the general fund's a lot. We're having to transfer a lot of our admin costs over to the general fund to help subsidize water and sewer, so we don't have to raise rates. Um, we are running on a skeleton crew and a skeleton right. budget, but hopefully someday the economics is going to turn around. We're going to get a little bit of growth, and things will improve over there. Okay, and of course that is tough because uh, everyone is probably stretched. we you know to ask for the taxpayer for any more money for. Uh, Almost anything is uh, certainly has to be a hard sale, and at the same time, you know, it's got to be probably tough for most people. Right, and I'm going to give you a good segue here, but um, water and sewer rates, in particular, are 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 hard felt by all the families in Plymouth. We we have almost a 60, 65 percent, I think, um, below medium income, low income. Uh, constituency in in the city right. so uh, our water bills are the highest in the county there's no question about it our sewer bills might maybe as well um, every every month we we have a significant portion of our of our users go to all the way down to a 24-hour notice uh, we're we're keenly aware of the cost of maintaining the systems moving them forward upgrading them and the impact of that on on ultimately the utility users and I, I think as we watch uh, what AWA is going through, there's a, a rate group in, in the county. I can't remember what they call themselves, but uh, they came and fought us over a, a garbage rate increase of 50 cents a month. Uh, and the issue is whether it is or it is not a Prop 218 uh, tax as, as the law defines it. Uh, we, I have noted that the law firm that is uh, taken on these lawsuits in these small communities has not gone up against a city that has the money to fight it. And ultimately that will happen, and I, I predict that it will probably get overturned. I mean, this is a franchisee. Uh, we do not have mandatory garbage service. But nevertheless, I mean, the issue is rate increases. And uh, how are the people dealing with them? Is it fair? Are the municipalities or the districts that are imposing them uh, doing managing their managing their uh, business as economically as possible uh, and and there's a whole f a bunch of factors that are associated with that so. okay and uh, you know speaking up for you and uh, uh, you know various businesses as well that, that work with uh, cities and the county their costs go up 
you, you know, I mean, uh, say ACEs, I know they, uh, you know, they uh, have a rate increase, right. possible rate increase coming up. Like you had said, the cost at the, uh, at the landfills goes up and costs need to be passed on. Ultimately, they come down to the final consumer and uh, it's tough for them, but at the same time, it's, uh, I don't want to say, but at the same time, it's how do you, how do you do business without uh, you know, uh, passing the costs on. You can't, you know, people can't just continue to eat costs. Right. And I mean, in the case of ACEs, they're obviously a private business and um, they're incurring uh, costs. They're they're at running their, their franchise at a significant loss in Plymouth right now, which is, which is being absorbed by other, other franchise um, utilities that they have in other parts of the county or wherever uh, in a, in a company-wide thing. In terms of of a city or a water district, um, the idea behind the utility rates is that the user fees pay for the cost to provide the service, and it, it, we we can all debate whether or not we need uh, excess level of management, excess level of 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 employees in different areas of the operations. Uh, but one of the things that's coming down that we we have to we have to take into account is at, at the federal level, the state level, um, regulations. And the regulations right. are put in place because we, we can't pollute all the rivers. We can't be discharging waste into creeks and stuff. So, and the cost of, to, to manage that stuff and to test for it and to continually monitor it is, is very high. And the personnel that you have doing that are, have to be well-trained. It's not something that anyone off the street can just come in and start doing this job. You have to be. You have to have certificates to do it. You have to have years of training to do it. And and I mean, just for chemicals and the cost of testing and stuff for a small city like Plymouth, we're talking twenty, thirty thousand a year just to do testing. Uh, if we we don't we don't discharge into creeks or anything. I know I own was was I talked to the former city manager about that. She said their their testing costs were going to go up to about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, this is just chemical constituents in, in, in water samples that they take. Uh, those are you know for, for our our water and sewer operations cost about five hundred thousand dollars a year. That's our budget. You know if we had to absorb one hundred fifty thousand dollars in testing, uh, that would have a significant increase on our on our utility rates. Um, well, Jeff, ahead. I could interrupt a little bit, like. Uh what about the uh, the idea that you know because we have uh, better tools to measure the quality are we maybe measuring it because we can find uh, you know some of the smallest things that uh, and uh, maybe they're not you know we couldn't find them before well there's no question that uh, that the quality quality analysis has gone up dramatically uh, the question then obviously is you know how many parts per million or billion or whatever of any single constituent is harmful to the public and and yeah, it's something that's evolving over time uh, but when there's when there's laws codified by the regional water quality control board or the state water board um, with respect to water and sewer uh, stuff then you have to comply with them and right. if you don't the, the fines are significant right as as a lot of cities in this county have found out okay well uh continue on maybe we should continue on a little bit uh, with water you know you have now have mm -hmm. the, uh, the the pipeline there in Plymouth yeah the pipeline in Plymouth uh, when we talk when we say the Plymouth pipeline there is a pipeline that was built from Tanner Reservoir which goes all the way to Plymouth right um, and when we did that we got it we used a, a a combination of grants and loans to build the pipeline and we did it in conjunction in partnership with AWA the pipeline does not benefit Plymouth completely. Uh, on, on a segment basis, uh, overall, about two-thirds of the benefit of that pipeline is for Plymouth. The other third of that pipeline benefits the Amador water system as a whole. Fire flow um, and, a, and a whole bunch of other things. And, and you'd have to talk to Gene at the water agency to find out exactly what that is. Sure, but I believe it's like Sutter Creek, Amador City. A lot of the and there's a potential expansion along the way anywhere that pipeline has gone to, not necessarily to Plymouth, although some of the capacity of the pipeline is for expansion in Plymouth, uh, based on what our general fund build out would be in some percentage over time, which which is historically this county hasn't met those growth percentages, 
and I don't anticipate that they're going to meet them any time in the near future. Even though we've, we've annexed some land and we've got a couple of developments on the books, we're giving him 25 years to build out. I'll be surprised if he does. I hope he does. Um, it's not going to happen quickly. And, um, and, you know, so he'll get to use, he'll get to benefit from part of that. But the, the flip side of that is there's, there's other users in Jackson and Sutter Creek and Amador City who feel that unfairly they're being charged for part of that pipeline. Well, when, when Plymouth bought into the system, we paid a million and a half dollars almost in participation fees. Uh, we, we built that pipeline, we, we donated that pipeline to the, to the water agency. Uh, so that's an asset that we're going to pay two thirds of. That's going to benefit everyone in the in the agency, not just Plymouth. So you know, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of of issues surrounding um, water in this county, water okay. everywhere, right. and um, you know the cost of it, uh, supplying it, who's paying for it. That's, that's I think in the next segment, maybe we can go into a little bit about that because okay. I believe the uh, the pipeline was uh, built in five segments, basically uh, the concept of five, uh, five different segments helping uh, five entities along the way. I could be wrong on this. We're going to have uh, Gene Mancibo next week uh, uh, talking about this more in depth. So uh, if I'm uh, yeah, he can discuss that with you. It's actually six segments. I do segments, think there is uh, some mm -hmm. confusion with this, and I'd like to get all the clarity we yeah. could. Yeah, I think it's, it's good to talk about it. Dialogue is important, and I think we need okay. that. We have to take a break, and we'll be uh, right back after this. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. 